Hello. Welcome to this week's edition of Creepy Chronicles. My name is Kirsten and I'm a librarian at the fantastic Red Bank Public Library. Last week, since we had so much fun delving into true ghost stories, I thought we could continue that fun and do some more true ghost stories. This time from the series The Worlds, and the first book in that series is entitled The World's Best True Ghost Stories, but there's also World's Most Spine-Tingling True Ghost Stories, and World's Most Bone-Chilling True Ghost Stories, World's Scariest True Ghost Stories, so a whole series of these books, each one with its own anthology of stories. Um, and as you can see here, this first one in the series was much beloved by me. The corners of the cover as well as some of the pages um, are a little uh, worse for wear <laughs> and a little torn out but that just means that it was a beloved series for me um, and still is. They contain some really good stories that I would like to share with you tonight. So um, we're going to be telling one from World's Best True Ghost Stories as well as World's Weirdest True Ghost Stories. And again, viewer discretion advised because um, my friend and I think that they are a little scary. So with that, we are going to start with the light in the window. And there's a little fun illustration here. The light in the window. On a train traveling west through Canada one night, some of us were sitting up pretty late telling yarns. One fellow told this story. A friend of his who lived in Ontario became fascinated with an old painting he saw in a dingy little store. The picture was of a dramatic looking castle on a hilltop. The scene was dark and gloomy and every window in the castle was dark except for a small one high in a stone tower. The man wondered why anyone would paint a castle with a light in just one window. Was there a story behind it? He bought the painting and hung it in his home but all the storekeeper could tell him was that it depicted a castle in Scotland. There was neither signature nor date. One day, as he was cleaning the painting, he found a few Latin words in the corner. He asked a friend to translate the words and learned that they meant, every century, it will be dark. This inscription made little sense to him and he forgot about it. The painting hung in the man's home for many years and friends enjoyed speculating about why the window was lighted. It was quite a conversation piece. One evening, the owner of the painting was telling some guests about how he had acquired it and answering questions about its background and meaning. The guests wanted to see this unusual and mysterious piece of art, so they all trooped into the hall where it hung. Imagine their astonishment and the consternation of their host when they saw that, on the painting, the window in the tower was dark. Examining the painting closely, they were astonished to see that the black paint on the once light yellow window was as old and cracked as the paint on the rest of the picture. There were no signs that it had ever been different, let alone bright yellow. After the guests had gone, the embarrassed hosts unsuccessfully tried to find a solution to the puzzle. The next morning he returned to the painting and felt his skin crawl. The window in the tower was lighted. Then he thought of the Latin inscription, every century it will be dark. He made a note of the date and began a serious search into Scottish history. Eventually, these facts were uncovered. The castle had been the home of an evil character who had two sons. He hated the elder son and kept him locked in the tower while his younger son enjoyed all the wealth and pleasures he could give him. Exactly 500 years before the night when the painted window had gone dark, the imprisoned elder son had died in the little room high in the tower. So that was our story from World's Best True Ghost Stories. And now we will be reading The Italian Bride from World's Weirdest True Ghost Stories. The Italian Bride was buried 70 years ago, yet they say that her ghost still walks along the paths through Mount Carmel Cemetery in Chicago. 
trailing the scent of roses from her wedding bouquet. Julia Bucalapetta was a beautiful girl. She fell in love and was married to the man of her dreams. Then tragedy struck in 1921 when she died in childbirth at the age of 29. Following Chicago Italian tradition, she was buried in her wedding dress. A life-size stone monument depicts her as a bride and a photograph mounted on her tombstone shows her in a long, full-skirted white gown carrying a bouquet of roses. A year after her death, her mother, Philomena, had a disturbing dream in which Julia begged her to have her body exhumed. Philomena could not understand this and did not take it seriously until she had another dream and then another. A whole series of these unusual dreams at last suggested that her daughter was unhappy in her grave so she pleaded with authorities to have the body dug up. This was not a request to be granted lightly, and by the time permission was granted, five years had passed. Eventually, in 1927, the grave was opened and the casket removed. When they lifted the lid, they found Julia's body in perfect condition, as pink and fresh as it was on the day she died. The onlookers were astonished and the body was photographed in its casket. This photograph is also displayed on Julia's tombstone. Apparently, when the body was laid to rest for a second time, the ghost found peace, for her mother reported no further terrible dreams. And yet even today, some visitors to the cemetery have reported seeing a lonely figure walking along the pavement in a long white dress and many passers-by have reported smelling the scent of fresh roses in the vicinity of her tomb, even though none grow anywhere nearby. Should we conclude that the Italian bride is at last at rest? Why then doesn't she leave the graveyard and take the roses with her? So the second story, the Italian bride, it, it does base itself in fact, there was indeed a bride named Julia Bucalapetta, and she does have her grave in the Mount Carmel Cemetery in Chicago. This website here um, called AmericanHauntingsInc.com does give a little bit more background, which I would like to share. Julia was born on June 6th, 1891 in Italy. Her father, George, passed away in 1913, and her mother, Philomena, emigrated to the United States with her daughter. They traveled to the west side of Chicago where three other Bukula children were already settled. In June 1920, Julia married Matthew Petta at Holy Rosary Church on North Damon Avenue. Julia became pregnant soon after the wedding, but complications occurred. And on March 17, 1921, Julia died while giving birth to her son. Because of the Italian tradition that dying in childbirth made the woman a type of martyr, Julia was buried in white, the martyr's color. Her wedding dress also served as her burial gown, and with her infant tucked into her arms, the two were laid to rest in a single coffin at Mount Carmel Cemetery. Philomena Bucola was inconsolable over her daughter's death. Shortly after Julia was buried, Philomena began to experience strange and terrifying dreams every night. In these nightmares, she envisioned Julia telling her that she was still alive and needed her help. For the next six years, the dreams plagued Philomena and she began trying without success to have her daughter's grave opened and her body exhumed. She was unable to explain why she needed to do this. She only knew that she should. Finally, through sheer persistence, her request was granted and a sympathetic judge passed down an order for Julia's exhumation. In 1927, six years after Julia's death, the casket was removed from the grave. When it was opened, Julia's body was found not to have decayed at all. In fact, it was said that her flesh was still as soft as it had been when she was alive. A photograph was taken at the time of the exhumation and shows Julia's incorruptible body in the casket. Philomena set out to raise money for a more elaborate tombstone. The finished work would be a grandiose tribute to her dead daughter, a life-size sculpture of Julia on her wedding day. Her mother, and other admirers affixed the post-mortem photo of Julia on the front of her grave monument. Below the image is the, an Italian phrase, which roughly translates to taken six years after her death. A photo of Julia in her bridal gown, presumably the inspiration for the statue, was also fastened to the stone. 
The postmortem photograph shows a body that appears to be fresh, with no discoloration of the skin even after six years. The rotted and decayed appearance of the coffin in the photo, however, bears witness to the fact that it had been underground for some time. Julia appears to be merely sleeping. Her family took the fact that she was found to be so well preserved as a sign. So that's the story. And then again, some ghostly sightings, not being the end of this odd story. Reports have been told over the years of a ghostly woman in white who has been seen wandering at the edge of the cemetery where she rests. Stories claim to have seen her in the daytime and at night, and many who know the story of Julia Petta believe that this is her restless spirit. One eerie tale that was told involves a young boy who was accidentally left behind at the cemetery not far from Julia's grave. When they returned to Mount Carmel to look for him, they saw him holding the hand of a dark-haired young woman in a white dress. When the boy ran toward his parents, the woman in white disappeared. So the story of the Italian bride lives on to today. So again, Mount Carmel is a real cemetery. It, in fact, Al Capone is buried there. <laughs> um, this grave is a real grave. So if you want to, if you are planning a trip to Chicago and want to stop by and visit, you can. Um, if you want to see the photographs yourself, you can um, take a visit to AmericanHauntingsInc.com and read this for yourself and take a look at what their research and evidence shows. So that is it for this week's edition of Creepy Chronicles. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Um, and also just to promote an upcoming event at the library, one of our local authors, Dr. Pat Heyer, will be stopping by the library at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, October 22nd to talk um, about some local ghosts and local ghost stories. And if you cannot make the presentation in person, you can register on Zoom and uh, channel in remotely. Um, all information is on our website at www.redbanklibrary.org. Again, thank you. I hope you had some fun listening and keep it scary. Until next week, bye-bye. <laughs>